Hello, Mark Lingwood from St. Mary's again, and today we're going to talk about UV-Vis spectroscopy. So what you're looking at is a UV-Vis spectrophotometer, or we just call it a spectrometer, usually. And this instrument can look at the absorbance of a solution at all kinds of different wavelengths in the ultraviolet and the visible range. And it can tell you at what wavelength the solution absorbs light and how much, which is useful for both identifying compounds to some degree, uh, really useful for quantifying how much of a compound there is. Okay, so how do you use this? So you have a cuvette, which has, this one has a clear side and frosted sides. It's designed that you hold the frosted side so you don't get fingerprints on the clear part. And you're going to start by blanking the spectrometer, it's called. And what you do is you put in some water, and it's water when you're just working with simple aqueous solutions. When you're working with, say, a biomolecule that's dissolved in a buffer solution, you would use the buffer solution instead of water. But in this case, we're just doing water, so that's great. So I'm going to start by taking the fancy scientific tissue called a Kim wipe. Ta-da! and wiping off the sides so that any dust or fingerprints or water droplets on the side don't go into our instrument. And then you push that in there. And then you go to the software and you tell the software this is the blank. And so here I have it all set up. I push the button, it thinks for a second, and then it says okay. Now what this does is it measures the absorbance, or really not the absorbance, it measures how much light is transmitted through the sample at all the different wavelengths that you have set up for it to measure. And f for example, if I then tell it, okay, now measure this sample like it's an unknown, you'll get just a flat line across showing, hey, look, the amount of light going through at all these different wavelengths is the same as it was before. Great. So now we'll take a cuvette that has a sample in it. And so we'll start with the red food coloring dye. This is red 40. And I already have this all ready to go and I already wiped it off. So then on our software, we can say go and have it take the measurement. And so what you're looking at here is the absorbance at all the different wavelengths. The red line is really your data. It puts this black shadow under it so that you can see the red line against the colored background. So this is showing us that the main absorbance peak for the red food coloring dye in the visible region is in the green. If I'm going to look at this, I'll say it's probably about 500 nanometers. It's kind of a broad peak, so it's hard to get it precisely. So let's think a bit more about what 500 nanometers means. So if you have a photon that has a wavelength of 500 nanometers, it represents green light. It's kind of on the edge between blue and green. For our purposes, we'll call it green. And to show what I mean by that, I have a couple laser pointers here. And so the green laser pointer I have is 530 nanometers. And if you emit 530 nanometer photons from this laser pointer, it makes a green spot. I have a different laser pointer that's red. It's 650 nanometers. And when you emit 650 nanometer photons, you get a red dot. Okay, so our red food coloring dye is absorbing photons across a range of wavelengths that's centered at about 500 nanometers, which are green photons. And so that's a really important point that you'll think about in the lab. Okay, so now I'm going to put in a different food coloring solution. I think I'll do the yellow next, and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, now I have yellow number six, which is really an orange color. It's kind of misnamed. But let's see what it looks like on the software. I'll see the absorbance spectrum of this. And yellow number six has a absorbance peak where the highest point here, which we'd call the lambda max, is a little off to the side. And it's about 480 nanometers. Again, it's a little broad, so it's hard to tell precisely where it is, but about 480 nanometers. Now you'll notice that the yellow dye and the red dye, although I didn't mention it, also have absorbance peaks in the ultraviolet range. And so this dye also has a peak at about 312, and then it kind of goes past our ability to measure it as we go down to a really low wavelength. The instrument doesn't measure peaks that low. And so these are valid absorbance peaks as well, 
It's that for food coloring dye, we don't really care what it does in the ultraviolet range because we're trying to make a color we can see, and so the absorbance in the blue wavelengths matters a lot more to us. Okay, now let me switch to the blue food coloring. Okay, here's blue dye number one. And here's the absorbance vector of, of blue dye number one. And so the absorbance peak here has a maximum wavelength value, or I should say wavelength of maximum absorbance of 627 nanometers. Okay, so that's the food coloring dyes. Now let's look at something that is natively colorless and we'll choose a caffeine solution. So let me put that in. Okay, here's the caffeine solution. Notice that it's clear, colorless, to our eyes at least. And when we measure the ultraviolet visible absorbance spectrum, we have a peak down in the ultraviolet range and it's completely flat in the visible range. So caffeine does not absorb any light over the visible range, which is why it's colorless to our eyes, but it does absorb in the ultraviolet. And the maximum wavelength here is uh, 271.0 nanometers. One important application of this is in the biological or biochemistry realm where you can measure the absorbance of a protein solution and some of the amino acids in the protein will absorb light in the ultraviolet range and you can use that to quantify how much of your protein you have in solution through a pretty simple quick measurement. And there's also many other applications of ultraviolet visible spectroscopy as well. In general chemistry, we use it a lot because it's a really simple way to measure the concentration of something that absorbs light in solution. And so we'll use it many, many times for that. Hopefully this was a good introduction for you. Thank you for watching.